Good morning. Welcome to the Elm. We are so pleased to bring to you this morning our message entitled The Gestation Period. Here at the Elm, our mission is to help people have an elevated relationship with God and a better understanding of the self. We try to accomplish our mission by letting people know that we have a God who loves us and that who God created us to be, it is okay. He didn't create everyone the same and that we must identify our unique gifts and talents. Let us pray. Our God, thank you for creating us. Thank you for bringing peace into our lives, for allowing us to heal, dear Father, for whatever it is that we may be going through. And we know that here in the United States, dear Father, that you are answering our prayers. You have provided a stimulus check that is helping so many of us overcome some challenges that we have been facing. You have provided us, dear Father, with hope. We ask you, dear Father, to continue to provide us with patience. We know, dear Father, that this period, this season that we're in, it is for a reason. We don't always understand it, but we know that in time, when we look back and we experience our growth, we will be able to see that it was preparing us, dear Father, for those promises that you have made us, those things that we have prayed for, that you have said yes to, dear Father, that what we're doing is being prepared to receive it. For those of us, dear Father, who are grieving the loss of a loved one, we know that there is nothing that can be said or done to take away the feelings that we have when we lose someone so dear to us. We know, dear Father, that we only have to lean on you. Our hearts go out, dear Father, to our loved ones, our family, our friends throughout the world, because there is loss. And that we will lean on you and that our friends, our family, our loved ones, they will help us in any way that they can by being mindful of our feelings and by listening to us, embracing you so that we can heal whatever it is. Amen. New Year's Eve. 2020, I was in the congregation of Minister Sharon Feaster when she was saying that 2020 is the year of double blessings. And as I look back one year ago today, many of us didn't think that 2020 would be a year of blessings. But it was a year of blessings. It was a year of growth. But as I sat in her congregation on New Year's Eve and I listened to her message, I remembered all the things that God had promised me decades ago when I was still a young person living in my mom's house. I remembered lying in my bedroom and remembering all of the things that God had promised me even when my heart was aching. 
And as I listened to her, I thanked God for the things that had already manifested while I was remembering the things that were yet to come. As 2020 began and ended, I still recalled Minister Feaster's message and the things that I considered blessings in my life and the things that I considered challenges. I remembered the promises that God had given me throughout my life and dreams and visit, visions and visits and in messages during my meditations. But the most promising or the most memorable promise that I remember came from God while I was pregnant. You see, the gestation period for humans from the time of conception to delivery is 40 weeks. Sometimes people deliver before 40 weeks and sometimes they deliver after 40 weeks. Now, when the gestation period is premature, it brings challenges that require the baby to be incubated and, and have special care because the organs have not completely developed to support life outside of the mother's womb. You see, the gestation time for a baby is the time when the body systems develop to the point where the mother's placenta no longer needs to nourish that child. Where the, where the child can be nurtured by its parents and its loved ones and to become, to become an independent adult who in turn becomes a nurturer and a sustainer. The gestation period is important. So those of us who are still waiting for a promise to be fulfilled, who are still waiting for a prayer to be answered the way that we want it to be answered based on what God has shown us about that prayer and request, I want to take you back to the 12th chapter of Genesis where we meet a 75-year-old man who is instructed to leave his father's country, to leave his kin's people for a promised land. That man left his land being called Abram, but by the time he died, he became known as Abraham. As we read the accounts of Abraham's life in Genesis, the life of his descendants, we know that it took almost 800 years for God, for Abraham's descendants to experience the promised land that God gave a 75-year-old man when he left his home country. The gestation period for that manifestation is more than any of us can imagine in our lives right now. But during that gestation period for the promise to come from Abraham to Moses leading the Hebrew people into the promised land, They needed to grow to be able to create an empire and a civilization that could match those that had already been established. You see, when Abraham left, we are told about him leaving with his father, his nephew, and his wife. 
We're not told about any descendants that he has at 75 years old. But as we watch Abraham and as we read about his life, we know that he became the father of Ishmael when he was 86 years old. And he became the father of Isaac when he was 100 years old. You see, what did the descendants of Abraham have to do to get ready to occupy the promised land? Number one, they had to grow fruitful and multiply in numbers. They had to have children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. They also had to gain livestock to feed the people who will occupy the promised land. They had to gain the skills they needed to domesticate plants so that they were no longer nomadic. They had to gain the knowledge of how to get along with others. And as we read in Genesis, we see Abraham make treaties. We see Isaac make treaties. We see Jacob make treaties. We see Joseph make treaties. Additionally, they had to the, develop the knowledge on how to manage a complex government. That is why Joseph was sent to Egypt so that he could learn how a complex government operated. He needed to learn how to manage and organize. He needed to understand the supplies. He needed to understand preservation. And Moses, Moses being educated in Egypt, along with Pharaoh's own son, gave him the knowledge that he needed to be able to transfer to his brother and others who were crossing to the promised land and teach the people what they needed to take care of what God had given them. You see, when God gives us promises, he manifests them. He manifests them. It's not in our time but it's in God's time because he knows what we need in order for us to sustain what it is he has promised us. As I look over in my life, I cannot forget the promises that God made me in 2004, that he reminded me of in 2008, that he reinforced for me in 2012. In 2012, he said to me, if you do as I instruct you to do, then you will live a life of peace. And all of those things that I promised you in 2004 will manifest in your life. Now, here's the thing. God never told me that I would not have challenges in my life. What he did tell me is that I would have peace. You see, even when we look at Abraham's life and the life of his descendants, there were challenges that they faced. But throughout, we know that God never failed to protect them, that he never left them. They may have had challenges, but God always had the solution. Even in my challenges, I have learned that peace does exist in my storms because I know through evidence that God has 
not just my back, not just my front, and not just my sides. He has my center because that's where he resides. That's where he resides in all of us, in our center. That's where he resided in Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses. He never left them. They learned to live in peace, to grow during their gestation period. As I think about the gestation period, as I look at the promise that God made Abraham when he said, look out at the sky. Do you see the stars? That will be the number of your descendants. But you have to keep the covenant that I make with you. You have to keep it and so do your descendants. And that is what we see happening. Those covenants are kept. And even though challenges came, generation after generation, we can see certain elements of the promise be fulfilled. You know, we see Isaac has children. We see Ishmael has children. God gives an account of those generations that came from Abraham. And we see those numbers. We see how priesthoods are established, how chieftains are established. We see how some people take care of the livestock. Some people take care of the fields. Some people help to manage other people. Some people manage the gold and the silver. All of those things were growths that the Hebrew people need to experience before they could occupy the promised land because when they got to the promised land, they needed to be able to sustain and not just sustain, but to nurture and continue to grow. In Conversations with God, written by Neil Diamond Walsh, God says that he does not reveal all of the goodness to us that he has planned for our lives because we get impatient, because we would do things to sabotage or to get ahead of ourselves. God says that he has greatness planned for all of us. We just need to learn to follow his instructions, to lean on him, to follow his commands in order for us to experience all that he has planned for us. Now, this is where we find some of our greatest challenges, including me. You see, that growth process, we want it to happen just like that. But if we're not prepared to care for it, it will leave us. Once we experience the manifestations, those promises that God has given us, we have to do the same thing that we do with the newborn baby. We have to feed it. We have to love it. We have to pay attention to the sounds that it makes to tell us what it is that needs to happen. And that comes from our connection with God. Just like he did with Abraham and his descendants. You see, God was always there or he sent his angels to take care of whatever the needs were, even in the midst of an emergency.
the gestation period for manifestation is a period of obedience. It is a period of growth. And I want you to remember this. The bigger the blessing, the longer the gestation period. You see, for some animals, the gestation period is less than a month. For an elephant, it's two years. For human beings, it's nine months. We must learn to be patient, to listen to God, and to grow through whatever process we must grow through, even if it is a challenge that we may not want. It is God preparing us for the big kahuna. God has so much for us to experience in this beautiful world that he has created for us. He always keeps his promises. Abraham didn't get to experience the promised land. Neither did Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, or Moses. But their descendants did. And they multiplied. Those descendants, they multiplied just like God told Abraham it would. Just like he told it to Isaac and Jacob. And look at where we are now. Our gestation period. It doesn't end after we're born. Because those of us who are still alive, we're in a gestation period because we are doing what we need to do to experience those promises that God has made to us, our foreparents, and that will carry on to our children, our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren. Let's just trust him. Be patient. And remember, it took the Hebrews almost 800 years to experience from the time Abraham left at 75 years old to the time the people crossed over into the promised land. But it happened. What I can say is that In my lifetime, manifestations have happened at different rates. But I have no doubt that all that God has shown me, if it doesn't come through me, it will come through one of my descendants. Until I see you next week, I'm going to say to you, Namaste and God bless.